Hello and welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Tuesday morning out there. A little bit to talk about here in this video. We're talking about a couple of summertime cold fronts pushing through the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains, bringing some severe weather. Also looking here ahead to another heat wave and also an active storm track across portions here of the Northern and Central US here, heading into the early portion and middle portion of July. And also looking at a very active tropics here as well with a couple named storms here, potentially in the Eastern Pacific, as well as the Atlantic here as well. So welcome back everybody. If you do like my content, please subscribe to my channel as well as I'm trying to hit 200 subscribers here by the end of June. So please, please help me out. I definitely appreciate that very much. And I will also here provide you with a lot of long range forecasts here moving forward as well. So that will definitely benefit you here with very valuable information heading through the July 4th holiday. So looking here right now, um, kind of the cold front will start to dive southward here across portions of the northern plains, the upper Midwest and the upper Great Lakes here as we head through the day today. And ahead of that, we'll start to have some daytime heating, some stronger, you know, a low level moisture starting to push in ahead of this cold front. And that will yield the threat for some strong thunderstorms as we head through later today here in a couple of zones. One zone here across portions of Montana getting down into uh, Idaho, northwestern portions there of Wyoming, a slight risk of severe weather. Weather here has been added across central portions of Montana here by the Storm Prediction Center. And then a secondary area here of a marginal risk across southeastern uh, Minnesota, northeastern Iowa into portions of Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan with that marginal risk. And then a slight risk of severe weather here across portions of north central Wisconsin. We also do have a 2% tornado risk zone here across uh, northwestern and central Wisconsin here as well. This does include near here La Crosse, Wisconsin, and then getting up here towards the Wisconsin Dells area here as well well. So kind of looking first here to the west across portions of Idaho, Montana, and then getting into northwestern Wyoming, we do have a little bit of another cold front pushing through here across the Pacific Northwest as we head into late this afternoon. We'll start to see as kind of, you know, some widely scattered showers and thunderstorms developing across western Montana, getting into uh, Idaho, northwestern Wyoming during the late afternoon hours. And then this will kind of move on by. So just kind of, a, just you know, a couple hours worth of some showers and storms that might move on through. But just in general here, don't be expecting much rainfall out of this here as it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, hungry for moisture, if you will, as we could have just mainly here, you know, a tenth to two tenths of an inch of rainfall across portions here of Montana and then even back here across portions of the Pacific Northwest here toward uh, Seattle down toward Portland don't be expecting any you know much rainfall here with this system as well as you can expect maybe just a tenth or two of an inch of rain maybe up to a quarter of an inch of rain here up toward Seattle here um, up you know, uh, behind this cold front moving over here toward the north uh, toward the upper Midwest here into the Great Lakes Cold front will have a little bit more robust moisture to work with here. We do have a little bit of a line developing later this afternoon across northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, getting into eastern portions there of uh, Minnesota, getting down towards Saint, Minneapolis, St. Paul. As this drops south here, we'll start to see this weaken a bit, but still some stronger weather here across portions of south central Wisconsin, you know, from Green Bay down through Madison, maybe some stronger, heavier rainfall here down toward portions here of Waterloo, Dubuque, Iowa. And then as this kind of sinks farther to the south, it really start to lose that daytime heating here is kind of an unfavorable time of day and you'll start to lose the instability here across portions of northern Illinois, northern Indiana, and portions here of lower Michigan. And that's when the storm threat will start to lower here as we head into the overnight hours into your Wednesday morning. Just in general, with that line as it here develops and drops south through Wisconsin, eastern portions and southeastern portions of uh, Minnesota, northeastern Iowa, maybe far northern Illinois along the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, you could be seeing here, you know, isolated instances here, mainly, you know, quarter to three quarters of an inch here. If you do get under a heavier thunderstorm, maybe up to an inch of rainfall here, but also here, don't be expecting too, too much rainfall as this will be pretty progressive here, kind of moving quickly to the south as it does so. But just kind of looking at the overall temperatures expected through the day today, some decent temperatures across portions of the Arrowhead of Minnesota, getting into North Dakota there, and then kind of into portions, I'm sure, here into southeastern uh, Canada as well. Some decent temperatures across the northeast here, a lot of nice, you know, mid-70s to upper 70s across those areas, so some comfortable, very pleasant weather conditions across those areas. We still got some heat across portions of the Central Plains, down through Texas and along the Gulf Coast here, but nothing compared to like what they've had recently. All that heat will really really be bottled up here across the uh, desert southwest from Death Valley through portions of Las Vegas and then back toward portions of Sacramento as well where we have a lot of 100 degree temperatures continuing across those areas here today. 
as we head into the day tomorrow, that cold front that is pushing through Montana, Idaho, and northwestern Wyoming today, bringing that here kind of secondary area of severe weather, that will continue to shift its way to the east here. We have a little bit of a warm sector developing here across portions of the Dakotas, getting up toward Minnesota as we head during the afternoon hours here on your Wednesday. And you can see that here with a lot of temperatures, you know, rising into the upper 90s, even near the lower 100s here in the portions of South Dakota, getting into Nebraska here with some 90s all the way up into North Dakota. And you got kind of a warm frontal boundary extending into portions here or towards the arrowhead of Minnesota, getting into northern Wisconsin. And south and west of that warm front, you're definitely going to have all that instability start to grow. And that's why the Storm Prediction Center has added a marginal risk of severe weather across much of uh, Minnesota, getting into the eastern Dakotas here from portions of South Dakota into eastern North Dakota, and then maybe far northwestern portions there of Nebraska here as well. You do have that 2% tornado risk here in the portions of the eastern Dakotas, getting into west central portions there of Minnesota here as well on your Wednesday afternoon. So let's kind of time that out. The composite reflectivity here on the NAMNIS model, you can see some scattered showers and storms here developing potentially here as we head into the late afternoon, early evening here on your Wednesday, but still not a lot of coverage here. You know, we'll have just a little bit of a kind of a uh, push of moisture from the south and a little bit of instability here along this front, but this front's not going to have a lot of forcing along with it, not a lot of lift. So you're going to kind of have a more of an isolated to widely scattered coverage here of some storms. But where you do see those storms, we could have some hail and maybe even some you know damaging winds and maybe even a tornado here as well as you have more of those discrete or semi-discrete type of storms and if you do get under one of those storms you can expect maybe a quarter up to three quarters of an inch of rainfall here but again don't hear you know don't be getting your hopes up for too much rainfall as this will kind of the forcing is not really there for a, a huge area of rainfall as here it is kind of going to be kind of fast moving into your Wednesday evening. And then as we get towards the early portion of July, as we kind of flip the script here from July uh, into June and into the first day or so into July, we kind of have this zonal pattern starting to here take shape across the northern plains, getting into the upper Midwest and the upper Great Lakes and the portions of southeastern Canada here as we head towards the very last day here in June on your Thursday and then going into Friday, July 1st. And then you really start to have that heat starting to build across portions of the south central plains, across the desert southwest and the southeast here during this period with another strong ridge starting to develop here across portions of that area here as we head in towards July. And you can see that here as we head towards the last day here in June on your Thursday, June 30th, you have all that heat continuing here across portions of the south central plains, getting into portions of the southeast, the Midwest. But we'll have that cold front. I will have another cold front start to shift southward here on your Friday. Some pleasant conditions continuing here across the Dakotas getting into the Minnesota, into Wisconsin here with more upper 70s, lower 80s, and kind of a refreshing air mass will kind of suppress that ridge here down to the south across the Missouri Valley, down into the south and into portions of the southeast here during your Friday, July 1st time frame. Then as we get towards Saturday, July 2nd, we'll start to see signs here that this ridge starts to build slowly across the southern plains here. Although we do have a lot less 100 degree temperatures, we really will start to see that heat up as we head closer and closer to that July 4th time frame. But just generally here in the next week here, a week's worth of rainfall precipitation here outlook um, for the next six to seven days. Pretty active here, generally across southwestern Canada, getting across portions here of the northern plains, the upper Midwest, maybe a couple of systems here bringing some rainfall with cold fronts here across the Missouri Valley. And then here all that rainfall across the deep south into portions here of Florida, the southeast, getting a, you know down through the Gulf Coast here, some heavy rainfall with that system uh, spinning across the, the coastal Texas across coastal portions here of Louisiana. And then you've got that monsoon weather continuing here across the four corners here as well during that period. But largely across the West Coast, you're not going to be expecting too much in the way of rainfall here from Washington, especially down into Idaho, Oregon, uh, Nevada here, and California. Don't be expecting too much in the way of rainfall through the next seven days. So that drought will just continue to grow with all that heat continuing across those areas. And at kind of a quick look at your... Uh, 
at your Monday, July 4th, the uh, holiday uh, day for temperatures, you can see temperatures are going to be pretty pleasant. Kind of a typical summer day across most of the United States. You got all that, you know, extreme heat down into portions of Texas with those lower 100s starting to build around Dallas, Fort Worth, getting up toward Wichita Falls, down towards Austin here as well. And then all that 100 degree heat down toward Death Valley, portions of Phoenix as well. But largely across the northern plains, getting toward the Midwest here, the Great Lakes and the Northeast, really kind of a typical summer day here as you head towards that July 4th holiday. So that is some good news. A little bit of a cool down for portions of the Pacific Northwest up towards Seattle could have temperatures back into the upper 60s for highs on your July 4th. And then down towards Portland, here's some lower 70s as well. So kind of a pleasant July 4th across the West Coast, um, an exception to the, you know, the areas in the desert Southwest as well. Also looking here at a sneak peek of all the kind of the frontal systems and all of the systems here potentially on land here on that July 4th holiday. Maybe some hit and miss storms across the southeast into the Tennessee Valley here and into Dixie Alley as we head towards that July 4th holiday. Maybe some monsoonal weather here with some rainfall continuing, especially across uh, New Mexico, getting up into Colorado here, eastern Arizona, eastern portions there, Utah. Maybe a little system here up into portions of the Pacific Northwest here kind of starving for moisture. But largely most of the United States will have a pretty pleasant July 4th holiday here. You might have to dodge some storms here in a couple of these areas, but I do promise you very much a lot of dry hours are expected even across the southeast here, these popcorn storms that will start to develop. Maybe a little wetter across the Gulf Coast here, more persistent into Florida, but still some dry time here at times in some of those areas even as well. But then as we get a little farther here, as we get towards that July 4th especially, and then even further towards that July 7th time frame, we really start to build that ridge like I was showing you here. As we head towards the, you know, the second week in July, we have a trough kind of digging down across the West Coast here. We have a very strong ridge starting to develop here and build across the Southern and Central Plains. We got that troughingness here off into portions of the Northeast here as well. And then we'll kind of have that blocking pattern here continue as we head into, um, you know, that you know, second week in July, going all the way through July 11th, kind of an omega block, if you will. We have that trough in the West Coast continuing. You got that very strong ridge building up even further towards Canada here. As you head towards that middle of the month here of July, you got another uh, trough off in the portions here of New England into the Northeast. And looking kind of at the ensembles with this, this could have some staying power as we head towards that second week and even that third week here in July. And I'll show you that here. Look at the ensemble. This is the GEPS showing you of kind of a doing a really good job of showing you how warm things could really get and where that ridge will start to be uh, kind of build and you can see a lot of 100s and a lot of upper 90s across portions here of uh, you know Nebraska Kansas down through Oklahoma and down through Texas even some 90s getting up here into South Dakota but this really starts to take shape as we head toward that sixth and seventh time frame here of July where we really have a lot of these 100s showing up here from the Missouri Valley back into the central and southern plains and this really only continues here as we head toward the seventh and eighth time frame. Even the 8th into the ninth here, a lot of 100s here starting to build. Really hot down here into portions of Death Valley towards Phoenix. And then we really, this ridge just continues to dominate as we head towards that second week in July. And really even into the, you know, the middle portion of July as well. And then you got to kind of watch the northern periphery of all this heat. You have all that heat, all that instability growing. And on the northern end of all that instability, we got to watch that jet stream here as we kind of have a classic type of uh, jet stream here, kind of analoging. 2012 here a little bit here with kind of a stronger uh, anomalies here in the mid-levels across portions here of the Pacific Northwest kind of rounding that ridge across the northern plains and then dropping more to the southeast across the Great Lakes and that will just continue as we head toward the middle of the month here as that just that uh, ridge to the south is stays anchored across the southern and central plains really around here Arkansas uh, portions of Oklahoma Texas and Louisiana Mississippi all these areas will be baking and we could have some persistent kind of storm complexes start to develop here in the northern plains and then drop to the south and east here through Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, maybe even northern Illinois, and then kind of moving into the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic here as well. And like I was showing here with all the instability, this is the climate forecasting systems model here. It's not going to be verbatim of how much instability here there will be, but it does give a signal here that there is going to be some stronger instability developing across the Corn Belt here in the portions of 
of uh, Nebraska getting into Iowa here in the northern periphery of all that. That's where all of that, you know, all of that storm complex activity will really start to reside as we head towards the middle of July. And kind of looking here at the uh, ratio here, how they kind of work, we have progressive type of pattern here uh, with that zonal flow across the northern U.S. and the central U.S. here at times, as you have that high pressure system with that ridge anchored across the south central plains and the southeast, you really have to watch for those derechos here. Um, and you kind of have a second season of derecho kind of peaking back up here into portions of July. So that is definitely something to watch. And like I said, I've showed you this map several times. The ground zero here is over northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, and then getting down here into portions of the Ohio Valley, the mid-Atlantic. And this kind of favors that zone once again as we head towards the middle of July, especially that second and third week in July. So we'll definitely have to watch that here in the coming days and weeks as well. But kind of turning attention here to the tropics, we do have a tropical storm Celia still spinning here very slowly to the west here across portions right off the Baja here of California. That'll become a tropical depression here and then here uh, kind of dissipate as we head through the next few days. Kind of a medium chance, about a 40 to 50% chance here of another system being named here in the portions of the Eastern Pacific. Once again, off the coast, shifting its way to the west here the next five days. So that will be something to watch. And you can see right here, this is Celia across portions right off the Baja of, Calif of California here, moving to the west. That will start to weaken here a little more, get more disorganized. And then you can see the inve here investigation zone from the National Hurricane Center here being off the southwestern Mexican coast as well with some a little bit of kind of some disparity here. But this may start to organize and become maybe another named system across the eastern Pacific here in the next couple of days or so. So that will be something to watch. And then getting pretty active from the Gulf through the Caribbean and then into the southern Atlantic Basin. We do have the system I was talking about with all that heavy rain across coastal Texas into portions here of coastal Louisiana here. A low chance of development there, just kind of, you know, more of a flooding threat than anything else. You do have the... Uh a tropical uh, system two that is could become here a next name storm, a, you know, a storm or maybe even a hurricane kind of being favored across portions of the Southern Caribbean moving towards Central America. So that is something to watch. And then another investigation zone toward the lesser until uh, the lesser Antilles, the Windward Islands here across portions of the Southern Atlantic Basin as well um, across those areas here the next five days. So very active. And you can see right here all that flooding threat here with all that rainfall with kind of a disorganized low across portions here of the coast. Texas bringing several inches of rainfall potentially there you got that uh, you know tropical system two potentially here developing into a hurricane and tropical storm status moving towards Central America here the next several days here uh, right there and then here just behind it you have another system that the National Hurricane Center is watching another decent wave starting to organize here has a low chance of development now but I think those chances will be increasing here as it's moving into increasingly warmer waters and potentially more favorable conditions so we'll definitely see that and then even back to the west right off Africa's coast here we're kind of right on the coast of of Africa seeing another wave a pretty robust wave off Africa we'll have to watch as well to see if that thing has a chance to become a kind of another investigation zone as well um but it all has to do with the shear. I mean, if the shear is too strong, this kind of this wave coming off Africa will kind of be more of a nuisance as well. So we'll have to watch this. But kind of looking at the environment that these things are starting to move in here is getting pretty favorable across portions here of the Caribbean, getting into the Gulf here, and especially off Florida's coast here. And as it moves westward into this environment, you definitely have to watch the threat for some tropical storms and that hurricane threat as well into the coming days and especially you know the case is there because you have all this warm water across the gulf you have all the warm water across the caribbean here a little bit of cooler anomalies across just off the coast of central america so that is why there's some question marks as whether or not this will become a hurricane or just stay a tropical storm status but definitely a high probability of becoming a tropical storm at least um pushing towards Central America here the next several days, but just a lot of warm waters here continuing, and that will just continue as we head through the rest of this month here and into early July. And you can see that here just all Atlantic wide, you have all this moisture across portions here just off Central America, and then you have all this moisture across portions of the Eastern Pacific, just pretty active here, and it's getting starting to get pretty active across the tropics, so that is definitely something to watch here the next several days with any interest here in portions of Central America, the Caribbean, or even portions of the Gulf as well. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like my video, give me a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions below. I'll definitely be able to answer those questions as soon as I possibly can.
And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like I said, as I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers here by the end of June. So please help me out there, and I very much appreciate that. And I hope to see everybody tomorrow with a new video as well. Thank you very much, and have a great Tuesday, everybody.